You know, it wasn't really a good Raw, it wasn't a bad Raw, it was kind of in between. Holy shit, Samoa Joe. What is up? Good mic work back at you. Coming up a little bit different this week. I mentioned at the very end of my Royal Rumble results video last night that if Raw was big enough and significant enough that I might come up and review the show individually. And since it was a post-Big Four pay-per-view Raw, and SmackDown for that matter, I might be up here twice this week. And given what we saw at the end of Monday Night Raw, there's no way I could wait until Thursday to come up and talk about this and combine it with SmackDown. Raw deserves its own separate commentary tonight. So we're going to talk about the fallout from the Royal Rumble, how the WWE has set the table so far for WrestleMania, and all of the stuff that we saw tonight on Raw and how the show was in general. First of all, before we get started, I want to ask everybody that if you enjoy this video, please click that like button and share it. Uh, it looks like some of the YouTube problems that I've been dealing with in the past couple of months are starting to get a little bit better. Uh, my views on my past couple of videos seem to be getting back to normal. My subscribers are even increasing a little bit uh, more than they normally are. Part of that is probably due to me being featured now on TV tracks, but still, it's nice to see me not going in reverse. So hopefully some of those YouTube issues that we were dealing with for the past couple of months are fixing themselves, but in the meantime, I I can still use the likes, I can still use the shares, and I can still use all the help I can get. So please hook me up if you don't mind. As far as Raw tonight goes, I'll tell you, it was kind of, it was half typical Raw, half boring bullshit, but also half pretty good stuff and a decent setup for WrestleMania. I am not that freaked out so far about this year's WrestleMania. Last year I was terrified because we all knew that we were going to be getting Roman Reigns versus Triple H for the WWE title in a very predictable match and main event. This time it's a little bit different and WrestleMania Mania feels just a tiny bit more intriguing. And I think the ending of Raw tonight is what made this show. We had a few surprises. We had a lot of big name stars. We had a lot of big storyline progression, but it was still filled with a lot of that typical Raw crap. And there was a lot of criticism of Raw on Twitter from a lot of people, including myself. So luckily, as wrestling shows tend to do, sometimes one big major thing will help make a show great, just like sometimes one big major thing will ruin a show like we saw last night. And we'll talk plenty about Roman Reigns here in a little bit, but tonight's Monday Night Raw, to me, turned into a successful show because of the very end, the appearance of Samoa Joe. This is a guy that everybody was losing their shit about last night, about not debuting in the Rumble. And I was definitely one of the people disappointed that we did not see Samoa Joe, but I was also one of the people that was standing up and saying, hey, everybody, remember, just because Samoa Joe didn't appear in the Royal Rumble doesn't mean that he's not going to debut at all. Maybe the WWE just has something else in mind for him, and that's the only reason we didn't see him. And here it is, 24 hours later, and a lot of people probably now aren't that upset that they didn't see Samoa Joe in the Royal Rumble because I wanted to see Joe debut in a big way. And, and unless he was winning the Royal Rumble, all he would really be doing there is making an appearance just to get eliminated. At least this way, he's involving himself and interjecting himself into a major storyline with top WWE talent, and he's alongside the COO of the company, Triple H. To me, this is a much more impactful debut than if he would have shown up as number 25 or number 30 in the Royal Rumble and just got eliminated by The Undertaker or something like that. So to me, this was much better and I think the fans really overreacted when they were freaking out how stupid is the WWE to not give us Samoa Joe. Well, they just gave him to you. And I think they gave him to you in a lot better way than they would have 24 hours previously. So you got to spread this shit out. Royal Rumble was already a pretty stacked show. We had a lot of big names in the Royal Rumble match itself. And we had two incredible world title matches that both can be on the ballot for match of the year so far, even though we're one month in. Don't know if they will be there 11 months from now, but they very well could be because those matches were fantastic. So I think Royal Royal Rumble had enough going on to where if they postponed a Joe debut to Monday Night Raw or maybe at Fastlane or anywhere between now and the build to WrestleMania would have been okay. He's going to wind up working with Seth Rollins now at Fastlane, maybe first. Maybe these two guys have a match. If Seth beats him, he gets Triple H at WrestleMania, maybe some sort of a stipulation like that. And maybe it can even lead to a little miniature NXT versus WWE feud. Maybe in the match between Triple H and Seth at WrestleMania, maybe Triple H brings a bunch of NXT guys with him. 
and maybe Seth has a bunch of WWE guys or possibly even X NXT guys on his side, and it could be uh, you know a really big fun battle in war and would add a lot to the one on one storyline with Triple H and Seth if you added other guys in there. So Samoa Joe could be the beginning of that. So for me personally, I was thrilled with the way they debuted Samoa Joe with Triple H cutting that promo and Seth coming out to confront him and Joe coming out of the crowd and attacking Seth and Triple H walking away and uh, Samoa Joe just getting in the ring and beating the hell out of Seth Rollins. I thought it was a great finish, a great ending to Monday Night Raw. It really smashes Samoa Joe onto the main roster in a big way. Unless this is just a one-time thing, I suppose he could be a hired henchman by Triple H coming to the main roster just for one night to beat the hell out of Seth Rollins, but I'm hoping that this means that Joe is here permanently with a bunch of weeks before WrestleMania and still another pay-per-view before we get there. You gotta think that uh, Seth and Joe is gonna be the match we're gonna see. The whole overall segment was great, and not only was the segment great, but so was the build-up. Triple H's promo was even very good, talking about how he was disappointed in Seth and pissed off that Seth ruined everything that he handed to him on a silver platter and he didn't live up to the hype and the hopes that Triple H had for him and that he's pathetic and all this shit. And then the earlier segment with Seth and Stephanie was also pretty good. I was very worried about that because I've been talking about how horrible Stephanie is lately and how she's ruining Monday Night Raw in a lot of ways. Sometimes her bitchiness is fun to watch and entertaining and sometimes it really pisses you off. And uh, this was a segment that I was really worried about because they were advertising it since last night. And of course, I thought she was going to emasculate Rollins and probably slap him like she does to everybody else. And none of that really happened. Seth was not taking any of her shit and he was doing a really good job at being serious. I thought it was a really good promo by Seth Rollins because he wasn't backing down from Stephanie. He was insulting her. He was threatening her, even mentioning their kids. What are you going to do if I show up at your house and your kids answer the door? Which really backed off Stephanie. And then she says, you know what? I was lying. I told you that Triple H wasn't in the building, but he's going to be here. He's on his way here right now and he'll be confronting you later on. And she left. And for once, we didn't see Stephanie McMahon completely verbally bury another piece of talent in the WWE, and she didn't even slap him, which was even better. So I thought the beginning stuff with Stephanie was good. I thought the Triple H promo was good. And the nice surprise of Samoa Joe attacking Seth Rollins was a cherry on top of what I thought was a really good piece of business. So I am now very optimistic. I didn't completely hate the idea of a Seth Rollins and Triple H match at WrestleMania. I think that match would be much better than Triple H and Roman Reigns. But again, it was one of those predictable type matches. The one thing about Triple H matches at WrestleMania, they do tend to be predictable. His match with Brock was predictable. His match with Roman Reigns was predictable. His match with Randy Orton and Sheamus and a few other guys have all been very, very predictable. And even the Undertaker ones, if you think about it, because at that time the streak was still intact. So if they're adding a few elements to this, like some NXT tie-in, and now Samoa Joe and possibly uh, some other guys getting involved here, I think could help the feud. And I'm now much more optimistic about this program than I was a few weeks ago. We also had Brock Lesnar on the show, which was another surprise. Stephanie McMahon had announced that Triple H was on his way, so they had the camera back in the garage and a big SUV pulls up and they're like, is this Triple H? Is this Triple H? And out pops Brock and Paul Heyman and they walk right down to the ring. They go to commercial. They come back. Brock comes right out. Doesn't say a word. Paul Heyman does all the talking and he's humbled and he admits Goldberg's dominance and he says that Brock is standing here uh, broken and defeated and embarrassed man and he admits that some guys just have other guys numbers and all the greats have these guys he talked about Andre the Giant running into Hulk Hogan at Wrestlemania 3 after being undefeated for so long running into Brock Lesnar at Wrestlemania after being undefeated for so long Ronda Rousey getting knocked out Brock Lesnar owning victories over Kurt Angle all sorts of stuff so Paul Heyman acknowledges that and he says there comes a time in everybody's life when they have to face reality, so he hereby challenges Goldberg to a match at WrestleMania with basically the legacy on the line. You know, whoever wins that match is going to be a notch above the other one. And I'm laughing because... You know, you think back to when this all started, you know, 12, 13 years ago when Goldberg cost Brock Lesnar the championship against Eddie Guerrero. Brock Lesnar still, 13 years later, has not gotten revenge for that. So you got to think this time Brock is finally going to win. So this is a match that, because of its predictability, I'm hoping that they can do some things that actually makes it good. We really haven't seen what Goldberg can do in the ring because he hasn't been in the ring very long in his two pay-per-view appearances. So these guys are probably finally going to get a longer match 
match at WrestleMania, and I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that it's good. And I kind of hope that it's not the main event, especially if there's no title on the line. There's still time for that because we don't know what Kevin Owens is going to be doing at Fastlane yet, but I doubt he'll be taking on Goldberg for the championship. So this will probably just be a one-on-one -on -one grudge match between Bill Goldberg and Brock Lesnar, and they could add a stipulation later on. I mentioned last night that maybe it's a loser-leave WWE type of thing because Paul Heyman did say it will be the last time ever that they face. So if Brock does wind up winning, I wonder if that will retire Goldberg. Maybe it's a career versus career match. They've got plenty of time to add some stuff to this match, and I think it kind of needs it at this point. You can kind of see the writing on the wall and where they're going here, so much like the Triple H and Seth Rollins match, you know, add some shit to this. Spice it up, and let's see what we can do with it and have some fun with it. That's my plea to WWE, but it was cool to see Brock Lesnar on Raw. It was cool to see Paul Heyman kind of in that demeanor and uh, just basically flat-out challenge Goldberg, which you know eventually Goldberg will accept. Maybe he will accept that at Fastlane. Maybe we won't see Goldberg until Fastlane. He's advertised to appear on that show probably not in a match a promo seems more likely so maybe that will be the promo where he accepts the challenge and maybe there will even be a confrontation between the two I'm sure we'll get the contract signing on Raw a couple of weeks after that, leading up to WrestleMania, where they can throw in some extra steps or whatnot. So hopefully the build up to this match and the match itself will be good. Uh, but I have my doubts. Uh, so far, they've proved me wrong. The Survivor Series match shocked us. Royal Rumble shocked us. Uh, hopefully, WrestleMania will do the same. The other major story on Monday Night Raw was the situation involving Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns and Chris Jericho. Kevin Owens, of course, retained the Universal title last night. Him and Chris Jericho opened the show basically bragging and congratulating themselves for jobs well done the night before. Jericho helped out Owens in the match by tossing some brass knucks down to him and Owens said he wouldn't have gotten through the match if it weren't for Jericho's emotional support and their best friends and they were hugging and they were kissing and uh, Owens thanked Jericho for helping him retain the title and really didn't mention Braun Strowman at all and that prompted Braun Strowman to come out there and challenge Kevin Owens for the Universal title right there that night after Kevin Owens is so beaten and broken from his match with Roman Reigns Strowman comes out and wants a match. Owen says no way. Mick Foley then comes out in the most ridiculous looking green flannel fucking suit I've ever seen. I don't know what this guy is thinking sometimes with the shit that he wears, but I was laughing so hard and he actually makes the match and he goes, nope, you have to defend the title tonight. And there was even video of Kevin Owens agreeing to a title match weeks ago with Braun Strowman. So Mick Foley's going to make him put the title on the line. Backstage, he's begging Chris Jericho to help him out and everything. So this kind of looks like uh, Braun Strowman is almost the baby face. And a lot of people People were tweeting me that maybe they could slowly be turning Braun babyface and slowly be turning Roman Reigns heel potentially to work with The Undertaker because we don't know what the hell's going on with Roman Reigns. We don't know if he's going to be working with Braun or Taker at WrestleMania, but one thing that we did know for a fact, and this was one part of Raw that was incredibly predictable, that there was no way that Roman was not going to come out there and interfere in that match. It wouldn't have made sense tonight on Raw to have Strowman beat Owens for the title. You know that Reigns is going to have to come out and interfere in that, costing Strowman Strowman just like Strowman costed Roman last night, and that's going to set up their big match either at Fastlane or WrestleMania, and that's exactly what we saw. But now maybe it could be a three-way at Fastlane. Maybe Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns both get a title match against Kevin Owens at Fastlane, and it's a triple threat. Was originally thinking that maybe Roman Reigns could still win the Universal title before WrestleMania, possibly at Fastlane, but I'm starting to think at this point that Owens is going to hang on to it until WrestleMania and possibly beyond WrestleMania, because what we saw tonight on Raw is that Chris Jericho lost a non-title match to Sami Zayn, and that's probably going to earn Sami Zayn a U.S. title match, probably at Fastlane. And what I would like to see is for them to put the U.S. title on Sami. Sure, I will have a nice, delicious, heaping spoonful of that. That sounds delicious. Put the U.S. belt on Sami Zayn, absolutely. And what that can do is still lead to a Kevin Owens-Chris Jericho match, but instead of it being for the U.S. title, it's for the Universal title. I think Kevin Owens is going to survive Fastlane, and he's going to go into WrestleMania to face Chris Jericho one-on-one -on -one for the Universal title. The BFFs are going to split. I did read somewhere that Jericho is leaving in May, so they got to wrap up this shit with Kevin Owens at some point. Uh, Jericho and Owens kind of seems like the most likely possibility for that universal title. And then you got to think about Roman Reigns too. I mean, he's got possibilities with two guys because he eliminated The Undertaker at the Royal Rumble and there was the stare down with the WrestleMania sign over The Undertaker's shoulder. A little bit of foreshadowing there. So you got to think that those guys could be involved in a match, but he's also got this thing with Strowman as well. So I think we either get Roman and Strowman one-on-one -on -one at Fastlane and Strowman can just be a guy set in front of Roman Reigns to build momentum for The Undertaker 
or Strowman and Roman will both get a title match and a triple threat match against Owens, and Owens will somehow find a way to retain, and Reigns and Strowman will then continue to fight, possibly at WrestleMania, and maybe Undertaker has a different opponent. I don't know. But I do like the idea that a lot of you are throwing at me that maybe if Roman Reigns is going to be facing The Undertaker, he should be a heel doing that. And you gotta wonder, how much fucking longer is The Undertaker going to wrestle? Who is going to retire him? The last thing in the world I want to see is Roman Reigns be the one to retire The Undertaker, but if a heel Roman Reigns does it, I'm much more open to that. So if they kind of turn Braun, and Braun's doing a great job, by the way. I thought his promos were good. He's impressing me. He's really evolving from when he first started and we first saw him. He seems like a completely different guy than when he first appeared on TV. So Strowman is developing nicely, and I'm a big fan of his, and I thought he handled himself really well tonight on Raw. And I think he could be a pretty good babyface. And I loved what he did at the beginning of the match, too, with uh, Kevin Owens, when Jericho, who basically said out loud backstage that he was going to help Kevin Owens in his match with Braun Strowman, Braun didn't even give him a chance. Jericho's up there doing commentary. Braun comes out for his entrance, sees Chris Jericho, and goes over there and attacks him, kicks him, and power bombs him through a table, just completely eliminating him. How many big, tough, meathead guys do you see that are actually smart? It's nice to see that Braun actually has a brain in his giant fucking melon head. So I really don't want to see Braun Strowman get squashed and annihilated by Roman Reigns on Roman Reigns' path to The Undertaker. I'd much rather see them turn Strowman face and turn Roman heel. At this point, that's all you can do. I mean, Twitter freaked out. I was so amazed by how mad everybody was about Roman Reigns being number 30. And I said time and time again that I understand it completely. When he came out there, I was just as shocked as anybody. I was like, what the fuck? I was losing my mind. They damn near gave me a stroke, heart attack, aneurysm, all at the same time. But my my biggest concern was I was looking at that from the perspective of him winning it. That's what I was the most worried about. When he didn't win and Randy Orton tossed him over the top rope, I let out this big sigh of relief to where I was like, yeah, the WWE are fuckheads for trolling us by putting this guy number 30, but at least he didn't win and I can let it go. What disappoints me is that the rage about this was so great. Even though like your arguments are right, I understand that putting Roman Reigns in there at number 30 doesn't make sense. When does WWE do fucking anything that makes any sense? Is this anything new. Look at what they've done to us in the past few years of the Royal Rumble as it is. At least this time he didn't win it. I think it's possible that the fans were going to boo Randy Orton winning it so maybe Vince or somebody back there said send out Roman Reigns. That way when he gets tossed out, whoever wins it will get cheered no matter what because it's not Roman Reigns. And it worked on me because I was thrilled that Randy Orton won without even realizing that Orton could potentially now face John Cena at WrestleMania 33. And we'll talk about that whole situation when I review SmackDown in a couple of days, so maybe that was just a little ploy by the WWE, knowing that the fans hate Roman Reigns, and if they put him out there to get eliminated, at least it'll get the guy cheered. So that could be the reasoning for it as well. I understand that we didn't see as many surprises this time around in the Royal Rumble, and I think a lot of the big stars came in very late instead of spreading it out. There was a lot of things wrong with the Royal Rumble, uh, but I find it really kind of insane, for lack of a better word, that the fans would let Roman Reigns' appearance at number 30. Although it made no sense, and I will completely admit that, for them to let that ruin two amazing title matches earlier on in the night, uh, I think is, you know, just a really good illustration of how negative the wrestling fans can be today. You know, it's just like, I, I get it. I'm with you on the whole Roman Reigns thing. Totally. I spent an hour today laughing my ass off at the reaction videos on YouTube. Did you guys see that? People filming themselves reacting to number 30 in their living room or in sports bars or wherever it was. There was dozens of them, and I spent a solid half an hour to an hour laughing my ass off at those things. So I totally understand the insanity of putting Roman Reigns at number 30. But for me, that would never ruin the show for me. Yeah, it would bother me, but it's like, damn, we already saw some pretty good wrestling. Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns far exceeded expectations expectations, and they put on a hell of a fight and had a war with each other for the Universal title, and John Cena and AJ stole the show, and the Royal Rumble match itself, even though it wasn't the greatest one we've ever seen, we still had a lot of seeds planted for WrestleMania, so I thought overall the show was pretty solid. WWE is a bunch of idiots, I completely understand that, but at the end of the day, it's still pro wrestling, and I'm going to do my best to at least enjoy what's positive, and not let the negative stuff ruin it for me, if I can help it. So, I think the Roman Reigns anger was a little strong, and I think... Uh, uh, I mean, what would the fans have done if he would have won? Jesus, can you imagine that? I mean, Roman Reigns was only in the ring for a couple of minutes, and he caused Twitter to explode. What would have happened, you know, if he would have won that thing? Even tonight on Raw, he wasn't heavily featured. All he did was do a run-in in the middle of the card. He wasn't in the beginning of the show. He wasn't in the end of the show. Uh, they didn't make him look...
look strong, even though he did run over Braun Strowman and Kevin Owens. After he was done Superman punching Braun a few times and hitting him with a couple of spears, Braun was actually right up no-selling that shit. And uh, that was it. It's not like they gave Roman Reigns a title match or did anything else for him. That was a lot of people's argument in the Royal Rumble, too, is why is he coming out on number 30? A guy in a WWE title match has never been involved in the Royal Rumble before, and you're right, they haven't. But guess what? Not anymore, because Roman Reigns has. It is highly unlikely that he will be holding up a world title to close out WrestleMania this year, so at least we have that. Those were the major parts tonight. Those three big angles for me is what made Raw a pretty decent show. Still not an amazing show or great, and SmackDown could very well be better, but at least this Raw wasn't horrible. It gave us some surprises, and it left me feeling optimistic moving towards Fastlane and WrestleMania. So I've kind of got high hopes, at least right now. That could change. Who knows? Fastlane could be a big flop, and we could hate what we're going to see at WrestleMania, but for at least for right now... Um, I am not terrified by the way the card is shaping up. Uh, let me just run briefly through the rest of Raw. There wasn't that much great on the show. One thing I didn't like about the show is we did see a lot of champions pinned again. We saw that earlier with Sami Zayn pinning Chris Jericho clean, which is fine. It's just going to set up a title match for Sami Zayn. But I'm sick and tired of the same old boring, uncreative way of giving guys title matches just by having them face the champion and having the champion get pinned in a non-title match. It happens too often. It's the only way WWE gives gives guys title shots anymore. We had new tag team champions Gallows and Anderson teaming up with Charlotte to take on Bailey and Sheamus and Cesaro, and Bailey pinned Charlotte in that match, which is probably going to entitle her to another title shot now that she's pinned the champion, and we're getting closer to WrestleMania time for these girls, so to me it's just like get a little bit more creative with this shit instead of just having the champion lose in a match. Just do something else to to build to it. Anything. I'm begging you. So we did see a little bit too much of that, which I didn't like. We had the typical Enzo and Cass promo, which got old. They actually beat Rusev and Jinder Mahal in a Texas Tornado match, and Lana, god damn, did she look good. I liked Neville's coronation. Of course, he won the Cruiserweight title last night at the Royal Rumble. He came out to be coronated, and he wanted everybody to refer to him as the king, and he's the king of 205 Live in the Cruiserweight division, and he's really into this king gimmick and kind of gave shit to the fans again and says that he's his own man. And Rich Swan did interfere and come out and confront him and actually tried to respect him and, and said, good match last night, tried to shake his hand, and Neville said, F off. The two of them started brawling, and uh, Rich Swan fought off Neville. Neville retreated, and uh, we're going to get a rematch with these guys, I'm sure, on an up coming episode of 205 Live or at Fastlane or something like that. But I'm really hoping, like I mentioned a couple weeks ago, that Neville goes on a really long, pretty solid title run. And I wouldn't even mind if it lasted as long as SummerSlam. I was in and out of the room during the Tony Nese and Mustafa Ali match. I know that Nice won, but I didn't see what he said in his promo. So that part I missed. You guys can fill me in there. We also had Nia Jax facing Sasha Banks again. Of course, Sasha is selling the leg injury, and she basically goes into this match against the doctor's wishes, against Bailey's wishes. She gets in there with Nia anyway. Nia starts killing her, and the referee stops the match. Bailey even tries to come down and help out, but Nia kind of stares her down a little bit. So they're continuing this thing with Sasha and Nia, and I guess when Sasha is healthy, she'll give Nia a little bit more of a run for her money. So that pretty much does it for Raw. That's all I'm really going to talk about. So now we can kind of see, at least on the Raw side of things, where they're heading. We know we're going to get Seth Rollins versus Triple H at WrestleMania. We know we're going to get Bill Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. It's still very likely we're going to get Chris Jericho versus Kevin Owens. This could possibly be for the Universal title. And we're either going to get Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker or Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. Now, if it's Roman and Strowman, that one's easy to set up. If it's Roman and Taker, they still have to figure out a way to make that happen happen, maybe Undertaker does interfere in the next match that Roman Reigns has, whether it's for the Universal title or a one-on-one -on -one match with Braun Strowman. Maybe Taker comes out and makes his presence known in that, and that leads to the match. But if they do wind up doing the heel turn, I mean, at this point, that's the only thing that's going to save Roman Reigns. A heel turn is the only way that the crowd can really accept this guy on the roster and accept him in main storylines if he's not being shoved down our throats as a babyface. They missed this opportunity with John Cena for years by not turning him heel. I don't want to see a repeat of this with Roman Reigns. And he, we saw a little bit of tease of it at the Royal Rumble, the stare down of The Undertaker. This is my yard. Looks a little bit meaner, nastier. Of course, he came out and annihilated Braun Strowman and Kevin Owens on Raw. So we do know that Roman Reigns has a nasty side and a mean streak in him. So if he can channel that and become a heel, he will be much easier to swallow, I'm sure, for not only the fans that hate him, but for the fans that don't hate him too, and myself. I would even enjoy Roman Reigns as a heel. 
Daniel, and he doesn't even bother me that bad. So, you know, right now I'm uh, optimistic, like I said, for WrestleMania. The Raw side of things is looking good. Uh, we'll talk about the SmackDown side of things in a couple of days. I'll be up here probably Wednesday, maybe Wednesday night, something like that, to discuss SmackDown and everything we saw there. So keep a lookout. Leave me all your thoughts on Monday Night Raw, on the Royal Rumble last night, what you think they might do at Fastlane and WrestleMania and all of the plans going forward, at least on the Raw side of things. So you guys take care. I'll catch you in just a couple of days. And until then, peace.